Okay guys, uh, welcome to your first lecture, uh, your first crazy virtual online uh, lecture for US history. Now, um, the way this is gonna work for me right now is I am going to um, download the notes uh, onto your screen. I will uh, even have the PowerPoint on there for you to look at. Uh, this is just basically a way for you to see me um, and maybe you know my voice and going through these notes and whatnot will help you um, as you learn a little bit about what we're talking about uh, when it comes to uh, module seven. Uh, hopefully, you're you're doing well. Access in the book. Um, uh, if you reach an issue or something comes up, please don't hesitate to uh, Google, hang out me, or uh, send me an email. But for the most part, uh, if you're getting the login with my email and the login. Uh, capital M A R O O N S one apostrophe or exclamation point, excuse me. Um, you should be doing just fine. What I want to do today is take about uh, about 10 12 minutes and uh, talk a little bit about the Oregon Trail and uh, the concept of all of the, the people wanting to continue to push uh, from the east coast uh, over to uh, the west coast of uh, Oregon, California, Washington, and whatnot. Okay, so on your notes, uh, which you will have, uh, which I'm using as well, you will see, so you're kind of following along as we go, and what I may do uh, some days is I'll do notes, and then I'm going to ask you to um, jot down a few different things, maybe uh, about the notes, maybe a question you may have, or something that you may want to post to the stream, and then maybe we can use that time to answer as well. Uh, this is one of the simple ways for us to communicate and to go through things. So we are looking at uh, the start of our unit, the start of our year, uh, in terms of where we're gonna be is the 1820s, okay? And we are talking about um, people wanting to move west. Why do you move west? Pretty simple, right? You want a fresh start. Um, people were not liking the east coast, it was getting very populated, um, and people were looking for that fresh start, starting anew, heard stories and wanted to move out there. So white settlers are gonna bypass the Great Plains, which is this area in red, okay? And they're gonna move for three specific areas. Um, among them is Oregon and California, which is what we're gonna look at today. And then tomorrow, uh, or if it's not tomorrow, it will definitely be uh, Thursday, we will get into um, Texas as well, okay? So they bypass the area in red and they just keep going. Um, what are some reasons, right? Because I mean, if you're looking to start fresh, you find a fresh place, the problem is really simple. First off, many people thought that the plains were a desert. Um, it looked a little boring. Uh, I've talked about this all the time. Um, I believe personally that the state that we live in is extremely boring, right? It's very flat. Um, and back then there were no uh, towns and villages and places and people just kept pushing through because they heard of the beauty of the mountains and the coast. And uh, that is what they were looking to get to. Um, you've also got some Plains Indians that are living here who aren't too excited to see these uh, white European settlers push in, okay? You've got the Apache uh, who are there. You've got the Sioux Indians, uh, Sitting Bull, who we will discuss later on. You've got the Comanche Indians, okay? Um, there's also not a lot of trees, like I said, just kind of a, a simple area. And these uh, sod houses, could you really imagine living in something like that? Um, you want an opportunity to, to start fresh and you're gonna live in a house made out of basically grass and dirt, okay? I don't think so. Now, some people didn't have a choice, right? And, and they may do with the best things that they had, but the land was also really hard to soil, okay? It, it's hard to till that land. The soil is just rough and uh, you weren't getting a lot out of it. So many people chose to skip uh, the areas of Kansas, Nebraska, North Dakota, South Dakota, and push into the Rocky Mountains, okay? So there it is, okay? Um, this area right here is the furthest, most you know, western part of our country, and you've got Oregon and Washington is basically what you're looking at. Uh, you may have heard of the men by the name of Lewis and Clark, uh, who took a journey back in the early 1800s. Uh, they left right here from St. Louis, okay? And uh, they were looking for a waterway from St. Louis to the Pacific Ocean. Um, they did not make it. 
because of the massive Rocky Mountains that kind of got in the way. So these two men got the ball rolling though, okay? Uh, this is kind of a breakdown of what our country looked like when they left. Uh, these are the 13 colonies over here. And then you've got this territory, the Louisiana Purchase, which was owned by France. Uh, you've got the Spanish territory. And then this Oregon country where we're pushing is actually owned by the British uh, as well. But we're just gonna kind of push in there. Um, the British and the United States, you know, Revolutionary War, War of 1812, we've been button heads, but this is kind of a breakdown of what that map looked like, okay? And here you have it. So we're looking at this territory here. This is basically uh, what we know as Oregon and Washington, and this would be uh, present-day Canada, okay? But this is the territory that's being disputed by the United States and the British, all right? Um, in an effort to avoid another war, uh, we're going to be peaceful about it. Uh, we're going to try to have a border here. We're going to look at this issue, but we want to just coexist. We don't want to go to war again uh, with the British. So everyone's going to kind of get along. You've got number three uh, on your notes where we've got these mountain men who settled the area, uh, but there's just a few of them. Uh, if you've ever heard of a mountain man, uh, just think of it as someone who is very... Uh, rugged, uh, lives off of the land, uh, is, is, is very tough, uh, is, is someone that can, can make it with minimal things. And these were your mountain men, okay? And they were very good trackers, they were very good hunters, they were very good guides for people uh, to push them through, and they worked in those Rocky Mountains. So you see the area highlighted right there, um, and that's kind of where they were at. So we are continuing to push this way, right? We've also got these missionaries. Um, if you don't know what a missionary is, it's a person who looks to spread um, their, their ideas. Uh, in this case, we're talking about um, the Whitmans who went out west to spread Christianity, okay? Uh, popular religion, obviously. Uh, Christianity is a very popular religion, and they are looking to convert Native Americans. Unfortunately, they will uh, be killed by the people who they are attempting to convert. Um, but they will send back, and I believe this is a question in your module, uh, they will send back messages of how beautiful the land is and how awesome it is out here. And who wouldn't want to go out there and, and try to uh, start over? So these people sent the message out. They kept the ball rolling with Lewis and Clark. And uh, tons of people just take that chance. I know many of you, even though I can't see you and see your faces, uh, many of you will look to take that chance when you get older. And that's exactly what these people are doing. You know, husband, wife, baby. There's the baby right there, you can't really tell. But they are just going to make the best of it. Um, Americans are growing excited because uh, the concept of the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. And this is the most important aspect of today's lecture. Uh, it's something called manifest destiny, okay? Um, it's a very simple concept. It's a belief that God wants us to settle this land. Okay, um, religion may be very important to some of you, maybe not to others, but in the early 1800s when these uh, Christians were settling on the East Coast and pushing West, uh, this mindset that God wants us to do it is only added incentive, right? It's only another reason to keep pushing in uh, to the West Coast, to California, Oregon, and Washington, okay? You know, these images pop up of, of these people being protected by angels as they push forward, right? Um, uh, it was a very crazy time in terms of uh, what you had to go through to get there, but people did it, right? So then we get to the Oregon Trail. So you are looking at uh, a typical journey that you might take leaving over here from Independence, Missouri. So, you know, down here is where we would have been located here. Here's St. Louis, look, there's, you know, Belleville and, and uh, whatnot. And then you would get over to the state and this was kind of your staging area where you would meet up with people, perhaps agree to travel with them, and you would push over to Oregon, okay? Um, people are going by the hundreds, by the thousands, uh, and everyone is looking for that fresh start, all right? Settlers were guided uh, by these mountain men. We're on the back of your notes, if you're following along, we're on a page two. Um, these settlers are guided by these mountain men uh, for the right price, uh, if you traded with them, they will get you through those Rocky Mountains. And, and you trusted what they were, what they were doing, and, and you followed the same trails that people were using, okay? Um, 
And there's your trail though, check it out. You've got plains, the green represents just flat land. And then, I mean, the majority of the journey is mountains. So you have to be ready uh, to handle all those problems. It could take anywhere up to a half a year. So imagine sitting in a wagon with grandma, you know, for six months. No headphones, no beats, no iPhone. You know, you, you, don't, you don't get to just FaceTime with your friends back on the East Coast. Uh, you are next to grandma, talking to grandma, singing with grandma, twiddling your thumbs with grandma uh, as you continue to push forward, okay? Um, you did have a choice when you reached certain uh, parts of the journey. You could choose to push south, uh, where you would go towards California, or you could choose to push north into Oregon, okay? Um, the journey is extremely hard. I'm not gonna lie, it's extremely dangerous. Um, you, you had to deal with all the elements. Um, you were really out on your own at times. Uh, you had to worry about um, animal attacks, you know, wild, you know, bears coming in. You had to worry about Native Americans that might attack you. You had to worry about the weather. Uh, you could hit a snowstorm and be snowed in. If you've ever heard of the Donner Party, which I may show a short video of uh, for you, um, they had to resort to, you know, some drastic measures to survive because they got caught in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Um, Native Americans weren't, you know, super concerned as long as you kind of left them alone, but they're willing to trade. Uh, that's how they made their living. That's how you know Native Americans survived. They trade with one another, um, and they were looking for things if we had them. And by uh, you know the 1840s, there are more uh, American settlers than there are British settlers. There are uh, we are pouring in. We are coming over the mountains, and England is going to have to make a decision uh, in terms of what they want to do. And we are eventually going to create that border. Uh, between Canada and the United States uh, in terms of, of what there is. Uh, this is just a small kind of taste of what we're going to be doing. Um, I hate that I can't see you guys. I hate that I can't interact with you, but I feel it's important for me to try to lead you through some of these notes. Uh, for some of you, it's a known fact that uh, you know if you hear someone giving notes to you and as you're looking along and reading them that you will process this information better. Uh, you will you know, it will come down to some assessments for you to do, but my hope is that, you know, these little 10, 15, 17 minute lectures that we do will help you to understand the material uh, other than just doing book work and, and other things. So I hope everyone's doing well. I hope all of you are completing that assignment. I don't think it was extremely difficult. Uh, you will receive another assignment uh, probably for Thursday. Uh, that all of you will wrap up quickly and we will continue to push forward on this module. You do have all the notes in front of you. You do have the PowerPoint. I am just simply asking that you, you know, you log in and you show up uh, to watch these videos because we'll, we'll still be able to, to have some type of uh, interaction, some face-to-face -face stuff, even if it's just me on a screen. Uh, I think it's important that all of you know that we're in this together, okay? And we may not like it, but we're going to get through it. So. If you have any questions, you can always reach me, Google Hangouts, email, um, anytime. Uh, I am usually sleeping by 10 p.m. every night. That's what happens when you get old and you're 24 years old, okay? And uh, make sure that uh, you are up to date with your stuff, and I will post grades as quickly as I possibly can and keep you guys in the loop, and I hope that you uh, are doing well with all your other classes, and I'll talk to you soon.